You know, somebody told us that we kind of look the same, but to be perfectly honest, I just don't see it. Yeah, it is kind of weird because I'm red, you're blue. What's similar? Oh jeez, where did that necromorph come from? You know what, don't worry about it. Cause I got good old faithful right here. Actually, you know what? Let me handle this one. You know, that was a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. Huh. Huh. Where can I get me one of those? Hey man, just welcome to Super Important Views. My name is Steven. Today we're going to go over the Bandai Tomashi Nation's Ultra Act X Figure Arts Ultraman Suit Version 7.2 or you may also know as the Ultra 7 armor. Which this version of Ultra 7 is from the manga, which is the armor done by Moroboshi. And if you guys haven't read the manga, it's actually really awesome. Uh, states I have their own manga 7 right now, so if you are a little bit behind, it's pretty easy to catch up right now. But I do love this version of Ultra 7. Uh, in the manga, he's a little bit more ruthless than Shinjiro, a little more like calculating and more straight to the point, but I actually think he's a very nice contrast to what we get with our main hero in the manga. Now the suit is very contrasting to what we get with the regular Ultraman armor, and actually with the Ultraman Ace armor that they've introduced recently in the manga as well, which that one is a little bit more akin to what we have with the Ultraman armor, but the, head's, the helmet's a little bit different between the two. While with the version 7.2, there is a crap ton of differences going on with that. But it does have a couple of nice homages to Ultra 7 from the TV show, which I had, sadly haven't seen yet, but I do know a little bit about them. Trying to catch up to those, I've watched uh, recently Ginga, Ultraman Orb, Ultraman X, uh, trying to now get onto Mebius, and then hopefully we'll start trying to find some of the older ones, because of course I've seen the original Ultraman and Tiga, but I haven't seen Ultra 7 or Ace, which I really, really want to. Anyways, without further ado, first package is done in a very off-green color, more on the lines of a teal with the Ultra X figure arts on the top here, Bandai Tomashi Nation, Ultraman uh, actually has the English on the bottom here, also with the manga logo, uh, Ultraman suit version 7.2. I also like too that you can see the figure on the front of the packaging, but it's done in this more artistic scheme. So it kind of helps to replicate the mango a little bit more. On the top, just more of the same we've seen on the front with the Ultraman Suit version 7.2 Ultra Act SH figures. See on that side here, but you get the SSSP logo. Other side, exact same thing. On the back of the packaging, just him in some dynamic poses. Bunch of stuff I can't understand. There's some legal mumbo jumbo sandwich down the bottom. So, uh, as you can see, He's already been open, so let's just get into him. So now that we have Ultra 7 open up out of his cardboard prison, first we're going to go over a few of his accessories, starting with his sword, which is done in a very nice metallic silver here, where you have some little indents here on the side of the blade, and also some what appears to be like little drill holes going along the edge of the sword, and also a really nice edge to the sword as well, with a little bit of point here at the top, done in a more, not quite katana, because it doesn't have that little curve to it, but overall has the same kind of shape to it. And on the handle is done in a gunmetal color with some wrapping here for the handle. Which the metallic silver here is done in a little bit more of a dull color than what you've seen on the original Ultraman figure. Because on this guy you can see the silver on him is super shiny and metallic. While on the sword does not really have the same kind of paint quality. Because it more fall in lines with what we see on the Ultra 7 figure here. Which we'll get to that in a second. Also comes with a sheath that you hook onto the side of Ultra 7 which is done the same kind of metallic silver here with some added little detailings for it. And also you'll see right here that there is a place to insert a ball joint because he actually comes with this little arm that you can hook into the ball joint socket here. You just push it in, really easy to do. And then this part actually is going to hook onto Ultra 7. But one thing I want to point out is you can insert the sword into the sheath. So you can use it as added storage, which is pretty freaking awesome. Because I love it when you can have pretty much all the accessories kind of just hanging out on your Ultraman, so that's really cool. And then if you want to hook it onto the side of Ultra 7, he has a little hole here that you have to insert this into. Which is a pain in the butt and also super terrifying. Because as you can see, this is a really thin piece of plastic right here. So when putting it into there, you're just going to try to go in straight. Apply a little bit of pressure. Make sure it's not going to shift out on you. Because you don't want to break it. Ugh, there we go. So once you get it in there, it does give you a decent range of articulation. But one thing I want to point out is don't rotate this from the sheet. Do not start trying to move this around from here because you're going to put a lot of stress here on the plastic, which can cause snapping. So if you're going to want to rotate it, grab it right around here towards the base of the joint here, and then rotate it here. So it alleviates a lot of stress on that plastic there. So this is definitely the most worrisome piece of the figure. 
Mainly what I like to do is actually like having him actually hold on to it and then having the sword in the other hand because he does come with a hand that actually can wrap around this. We'll go over that in just a second. Or if you want to display it with them, just make sure you get it in the position that you want and then mostly leave it at that. And then on the figure right now, I got a pair of gripping hands, which is primarily for him to hold on to his sword, which grabbing the sword out of here real quick. All you do is you just pretty much just slide the handle into the hand. Good to go. Just uh, again, be a little bit careful with the sword because it does have a decent amount of bend to it, but I still worry about breaking it. Once you get into his hands, it looks pretty freaking sweet. Uh, very iconic for this Ultraman from the manga, so I'm very glad that he comes with the sword. Otherwise, that would have been a little bit disappointing. And another thing, uh, this does sometimes pop out. Uh, it's really easy to get back in there, though, when that does happen, because you'll see it's just a little peg right there. So you just pop it right back in. Good to go. Which is nice, too, to see that that pops out pretty easy, because, again, I worry about this thing breaking. So I'd rather have it pop in and out than... Uh, permanently snapping on me so one thing that's a little bit nice about that odd though that he comes with a grasping hand for his left hand because you never really see him using the sword in his left so still cool though then he has a pair of clenched fists for punching kaijus aliens and other ultramen then he has a pair of open relaxed hands for getting him into the more traditional ultraman pose or just using it for grasping onto random things he also comes with a cupping left hand for holding on to his sheath, which is the typical way I have posing with it, but you can also have it with the little guard on the side you're holding on to it as well, if you want to get him into more traditional manga poses. And then finally, he comes with a trigger hand, which actually this is supposed to be more of like a pinching throwing hand, which is primarily for his little throwing crest thing, which uh, is very uh, traditional Ultraman 7 where he would... Uh, Kind of throw the little crest here at his enemies. Funny story, if you look at the instructions, this is how it shows that he is supposed to be able to hold his knife, is what they call it in here. But that's not kind of the case here, because you'll see here the thumb goes over top of the front trigger finger. So you cannot just squeeze that in between. You can kind of just rest it on the front here, but it doesn't look quite as good. Uh, what I have been doing is you can pinch this in between the fingers here. So then it looks like he's about to whip it across the room. But still a pretty cool accessory for him to come with. Uh, it's kind of odd just to see the one though. I kind of wish it maybe would have came with a way to have it like sticking into a stand or something. Or just a stand for this figure in general. Because I feel like that's the one thing that this thing is primarily missing. Because uh, for the most part he stands up pretty well by himself but since the original Ultraman figure kind of came with a stand for like his if you want to have him like hovering or just to help him stand in general i would have liked to have seen it for this guy especially with him being like a web exclusive it would have maybe been cool to have him come with his own little special base and then quickly how you swap out the hands is just like on most other sh figure arts or figma figures you're just gonna want to grip at the wrist and the palm here and you just want to pull straight out from the forearm so you just pull it out Grab which other hand you want to put into it, which I'm going to grab the clenched fist here. And then you're just going to push straight into the forearm to alleviate stress on the ball joint here. And pretty simple to do. And for a closer look at his details, first paint job is done in a little bit of a dull metallic silver with some metallic red here for the add a little suiting, which overall looks good. I, I've actually grown to really like the way this guy appears. Uh, you also have some gray here on the side of the helmet here for added detail. Same with like on the sides here for the inner layers of the suits. Now, when I initially got this out of the packaging, I wasn't as big of a fan. To me, the silver kind of looks a little bit cheap. I know it's supposed to be how he's supposed to look in the manga because in the manga, him and the uh, first Ultraman suit do not have the same paint job. Because uh, you can even see it here with the other figure if I can grab it. Because you'll see for the metallic silver for the Ultraman figure here, it definitely helps to make the figure pop and stand up very well all on its own. And is very reminiscent of Ultraman. While on this one, it's uh, a little bit on the duller side, which is pretty much what makes it feel like it's a little bit, like I hate to use the word cheap, but just not as fancy as the other figure, in my opinion. Like, I, again, realize that it's supposed to help replicate the, his appearance from the manga. In the manga, though, you just see that he's a little bit of a darker shade than Ultraman. Not necessarily a different paint job, 
which is what's going on with this figure here. So I maybe would have liked to have seen more of a uh, darker metallic silver here than what's presented here on this figure. But over time, I've really grown to like it though because it does help him stand out between the two Ultramans. So I guess it's just more personal preference than really a knock on the figure here. Which for the head sculpt looks very accurate for the manga where you have some, again, darker gray here for the top section of his helmet. But you have kind of the more traditional Ultra 7 crest here on the top going towards the back with this front visor here. Which I kind of wish you could see his eyes on the insides. Because you can see him in the manga, there is like a little bit of illumination for the eye holes. Which on the Ultimate 7 figure, you do not see. But for his uh, mouth plate here, you can see what appears to be a little bit of yellow there on the under section here. I'm not sure if that's just like the plastic for the visor kind of protruding a little bit down there. But it does help to give it a little bit of added character. For his chest area and the neck, armor plating looks very nice. We got some added little slots. Some little rivets here for what I imagine are like screw holes or something. I don't know. Some extra armor plating here for the top portion of the shoulders. Same with on the shoulder pads here. Uh, no time indicator. Uh, Ultra 7 on the, at least in the manga anyways, does not have any kind of indication for how long he could be inside of the suits or at least his power level which on the back here you do get this very nice spinal section here the red looks really nice love the added little detailing here uh maybe i'd like to maybe see a little bit of cleaner lines here on the sides here though but still looks really great overall you got a little bit of added plating here going across the rib section here and connecting the breastplate to the back of the armor pads. Arms look really cool. Uh, this is another part that's a little bit more in line with Ultra 7 here. With these little armor plates coming down here on the bicep here with this armor plate on the shoulder pad. Moving down to some, you can see more of the rivet holes. Same with these extra armor plates here on the sides of his waist. And some added little protection for his back end. For his thighs here, you can see the armor plating on the side here. And then the more traditional Ultraman red here for the inner sections. Got some knee pads. For his feet also have a little bit of armor plating but this actually kind of looks a little bit more hodgepodge like this is actually like strapping kind of hooking everything together but i imagine this is probably made out of metal as well it just kind of gives that illusion like it's uh actually like strap supports it's kind of odd looking and then just some red feet here for the bottom for his articulation his head can look up about that far down about that far has a really nice wiggle to it can rotate side to side i Think it can go all the way around. Yes, it can. So a lot of play here at the head. For his shoulders, you can go up by that far, down by that far, all the way around. You can also extend these in and out for added articulation. So you can get the shoulders a little bit higher up, a little bit farther down. You can also rotate them forward and back. Sadly, no rotation here at the elbow, but it does have a double joint here. So you can get the bend pretty nice uh, about that far up. Straightens up about that far. Hand can rotate all the way around. Also has a little bit of a wiggle tip. First chest can lean side to side. A little bit forward. Decent amount back though. So pretty nice little wiggle there. Can also rotate a little bit side to side. But the plating back here really gets in the way of that. Same with for the waist here as well. Not too much of a rotation here. A little bit forward. A little bit back. And a little bit of an added wiggle there. For his legs, you can extend these up and down to help add the articulation. So you can get him doing a decent forward kick. Really nice back kick. And then can go out about that far sideways. And then inwards about that far. And then you can kind of just adjust it accordingly afterwards to get the line back upright. So when you want to moving a lot, it's going to look odd. But he can do it. And his knees are on a double joint, so you can bend him inwards about that far, straighten him up about that far. No rotation here, but you do get a little bit of rotation here at the top section. If you pull it down, you get a lot more. And then for his feet, you can go about that far forward, that far back, but you can actually extend these downwards to add a little bit more to the articulation, and then you just push them back in to help clean up the lining. A little bit of rotation here as well. If you pull it out, you get a lot more of a rotation. Then he has a little bit of added articulation here at the toes. And for a quick comparison, here we have the Ultraman Manga version 7.2 compared next to the original Ultraman armor. Which, again, kind of see the difference in the quality in the paint job. Well, not technically quality. I guess it's more just different paint styles. 
Still like this one better. And here is right next to some other Ultraman figures with the Essex Figure Arts Ultraman and the Ultra Act Ultraman Mebius. And here is next to some Essex Figure Arts Ultraman Kaijus with Balton and Zatone. And here is right next to some Godzilla figures with the NECA GMK Godzilla and the Essex Monster Arts Shin Godzilla. So overall, Ultraman version 7.2, I think he's actually a pretty nice figure. Uh, the accessories work very well for this figure for what I've seen from the manga so far with us being on volume 7. I know that they're making another Ultra 7 figure. Uh, that one's going to come with a lot more accessories, which is also, I imagine, going to be a web exclusive. Just like this one. And like all of them from here on out, it seems, because the Ultra Ace is a web exclusive. They're coming out Bemular. That is also web exclusive, so it makes these figures a little bit harder to get a hold of, which is a bit frustrating. Because for me, that's probably the biggest negative of this guy is just how hard it is to get a hold of him. Because outside of certain Japanese websites, trying to pick this guy up stateside, you're going to pay an arm and a leg for him. Uh, with this guy being a uh, big bad toy store, I think he was right around $120. But if you order him from, say, Nippon Yasan or from Bandai Premium themselves, you know he's going to run you a little over 60 bucks. That being said, I don't think you're going to find him on there anymore, so more likely you're going to have to try to get this guy off eBay if you're going to want to purchase him now. Uh, but for the figure itself, the detailing is really nice, and overall I've gotten accustomed to the paint job. Like I said, when I initially got out of the packaging, it felt a little cheap to me. Because with the original release Ultraman figure, the colors on that figure just pop and look fantastic. Well, on this guy, it's a little more dull and lackluster. But that's mainly because of the way Ultra 7 is in the manga. It's not exactly the same armor and the same color scheme as what you have with the original Ultraman. So I can excuse it, but it's just maybe would have liked to see maybe a little bit more metallic paint used and maybe just been done a little bit of a darker color. That and the Sword and Chief are probably the easily the scariest items on this figure because if you mess around with them too much or put a little bit too much strain on the part, I can see them easily breaking. So it's definitely a figure you gotta be a little bit more careful with, but for the figure itself, it's still a really nice addition to the Ultra Act collection. And I gotta say, I'm really excited for the Ultraman Ace to get here and hopefully it'll be here in the next couple of days. So that'll probably be the next review I get out. Unless Biolante shows up, then that'll be definitely on the forefront. But what do you guys think? Have you guys picked up the Ultraman version 7.2 figure? What's your guys' favorite character from the manga? Or is Ultraman Orb just more your thing? Please let us know in the comments. Look closer pictures of this guy on our website if you want to click the link in the description below. We also have a Patreon account if you guys would like to help support the channel. Also link in the description below. And help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button, subscribe, become a ranger today, and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.